Welcome to EducateVirtually.com. Our courses work on all of your devices, laptops, tablets, even your smartphone. Our course subjects include analytics, business skills, operations improvement, and those all-important certifications that are accredited fully by university in Lean Six Sigma and Kaizen Facilitator. So it's up to you. It's just one click away to get started taking some courses to grow your talents. Turn some of your weaknesses into strengths. So anyway, p-value explained again. Okay, so we're going to do it again. But let's see if we can start from the beginning on this and give you a good introduction to what p-value is all about. So the first question you may have is just what is the p-value? Well, it's actually a probability statistic. It helps us to guide our decision making. And 1 minus the p-value is defined as confidence. So if I had a p-value of 0 0.05, 1 minus 0 0.05 would be a 95% confidence. All right, so that's a little bit about our, our p-value. Now, a hypothesis test is where we use the p-value. We also use the p-value in a design of experiments. We could be doing analysis of variance, a t-test. We could be doing multiple regression analysis. And the p-value helps us to understand if there is a difference or not. And hypothesis tests are designed to find out, is there a difference between, say, A and B? So the null hypothesis, and this is important to remember, the null hypothesis is always there is no difference between A and B. All right, the null hypothesis, there is no difference. The alternative hypothesis, which often is what we're looking for, is the one that says, yes, there is a difference between A and B. They're not the same. All right, so the null is always there is no difference. The alternative is, yes, there is. The p-value is going to help us to understand, is it this or is it this? All right, so how does the p-value help to evaluate a hypothesis test? Well, let's take a couple of cases. In this first one, we're going to take, let's we'll call this case number one. We're going to have motor oil, and we've heard all these commercials out there, and they're saying, oh, if you use our motor oil, you're going to get better gas mileage. All right, so we're going to do a test between Quaker State and Mobile One. So Quaker State is our red curve. Mobile One is our black curve. And we ran multiple tanks of fuel in the same car. Um, we had the different oil, you know, oil changes, etc., to collect the gas mileage. We tested this, we collected all of our data, and we've plotted it. And we can see that when we just look at the graph, it really doesn't look like there's much difference between those two distributions. They really seem to be pretty much on top of each other. So just looking at the picture, we'd say, well, there's probably no difference. So we did our hypothesis test. In this case, let's just say that we did a t-test, or maybe we did an analysis of variance. And we find out that in this case, our p-value is equal to, and we're going to say it's some big number, 0 0.6. So that's what it calculated out to be. Okay, I'm not just, you know, we're just saying, okay, we got the scenario, that's what it came out to be. We're not picking this out of the air, all right? So it's 0.6. That's big. The p-value can be anywhere from 0 to 1. If the p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.05, we would have a 95% confidence that there is a difference between Quaker State and Mobile One. If it was 0 0.05 or less. Our p-value is really, really big. It's not 0 0.05 or less. It's huge compared to that. So this is telling us that there is no difference. We're going to accept the null hypothesis that says Quaker State and Mobile One give us the same exact gas mileage. There is no difference. That's the null. Based on this p-value and our data, we're going to say there is no difference. 
All right, so we reject the alternative, we accept the null, and if we were to say that what's 1 minus um, 0 0.6, we would have a 1 minus 0 0.6 would give us about 0.4. So we would have a 40% confidence that there's a difference between those two. All right, so I don't think we'd be very confident with 40%. In fact, if we're not at 95% or higher, I really don't think you should go bet the farm on that. Okay, we really want to have very, very low p-values to declare that there's a difference. So in this case, graphs look almost identical. We can't tell the difference between the average values. P-value is very high. I mean, if we were to look at the amount of sameness that we have between these two distributions, um, there's quite a bit of the area that is the same. So we can't say there's a difference. All right. Case two. Does tire air pressure increase or decrease gas mileage? Well, let's find out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a test. We're going to take the manufacturer's recommend PSI, and we're going to go 5 PSI lower. And we're going to run our car, and we're going to collect the gas mileage. We're going to use the same automobile. All right. Um, we've already proven that the oil doesn't make a difference, but so what we're going to find out is we end up with these two different distributions. They look different, don't they? All right, and we can see that there's not a lot of sameness. In fact, the only amount of sameness that we have between these two distributions is just right here. That's 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 the only area where we would say that they're similar. So this average and that average are different. It sure looks that way. So we go and we do our analysis of variance, or maybe we did a t-test, and we end up with a p-value that is something much, much less than 0.05. And in a case like this, it's probably something like 0, 0, 0, and then some number. All right, so it's very, 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 very small. All right, so 1 minus something that's very, 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 very small is going to give us a confidence of like 99.9% that yeah, there is a difference between these two, and yes, there is a difference between what the manufacturer recommended and having five PSI lower in air pressure, and if you don't have manufacturer recommend air pressure, you're going to get lower gas mileage. All right, we don't want to go on the other side of this because we know that you know there could be um, hazardous conditions if you put too much air in your tires. All right, so in this case, you know we see that yes, there is a difference. It sure looks that way. When we do our t-test or our ANOVA, we see that the p-value is very, very small. All right. So if the p is low, then the null must go. If the p is high, the null applies. All right. That's that's a quick little jingle to remember. So if the p is low. The null must go. Get rid of that. There is a difference. If the P is high, the null applies and there is no difference. All right, let's take a look at case number three. See if we can wrap this up. All right, case three. We need to maximize and reduce variation of glue strength on a bonded joint. All right, so we're going to test glues A, B, and C. All right, so we've got three different glues that we're going to test. And we can see that glue A gives us this distribution here. All right, glue B gives us this distribution here, which looks different and better than A. And then glue C has this really wide distribution with a lot of variation in it. And it completely overlaps the other two average values. So when I do my analysis of variance, because we have to use ANOVA because we're testing three things, anything more than two you have to go to ANOVA, our p-value in this case, you know, we have a p-value that would be equal to something like 0 0.6. And we say, you know, we're looking at this graph and we're saying, well, it looks like one of those is different. 
But what the p-value is telling us is we can't tell the difference given the test that we ran based on the fact that the three distributions, we have that one distribution that completely covers the other two. So what we do is we said we well, want it to maximize and reduce variation. Well, that's a lot of variability in C. So why don't we just say, let's get rid of this guy. Let's just say, hey, he's gone. Let's get rid of him. Bye. He's gone. He's not there anymore. So now we're going to look at the distribution of A versus B. Look at these two. And now we can see that, you know, I've got that X bar. And i got this X bar. That's for A. And this is for B. X bar A, X bar B. And I can see it looks like there's a difference between these two. And now I do an analysis of variance on just these two. I take that data out of the whole situation. And then I end up with a p-value now that is equal to something like you know, 0. Point, uh, 0, let's say, 3. All right. So that's less than 0.05. Um, it's not super, super low, but that tells us there is a difference all right, between these two. I mean, we do have some overlap, yeah, but we're seeing that there is a difference. And glue B all right, is the one we're going to choose because it gives us less variability and a higher pull strength. So that's the p-value explained again, and hopefully that will help you out. All right, so anyway, educatevirtually.com. We have online e-learning courses. Come on over and take some. They're really, really good, and we hope to see you there.